this is kind of a spicy topic, um, and we'll try to sanitize the more controversial com components, but I think it's a discussion that's interesting, and I haven't commented on this. I'm not sure if you have either, but Nathan J. Robinson of Current Affairs, he posted an article, uh, two spicy. articles. This is spicy, it is. Uh, so the first article that he posted was, isn't right-wing populism just fascism? And he kind of directly takes a shot at rising on the hill um, mm -hmm. over a book that I actually have. Um, oh, okay. How is and it? So, I haven't read it yet. Um, I, I bought it because I really like Crystal Ball. I think she's sharp. But part of the reason why I bought this is because apparently there's an explanation of what the new right is. Now, my understanding, maybe this is uh, too simplistic, is that right-wing populism isn't a thing. Like, I have never um, thought of populism in terms of right-wing or left-wing. It's just whatever is popular, mostly mm -hmm. economic policy, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know what right-wing populism means. To me, I always thought if you're right-wing populist, that's usually you're just a fascist. So I, I was hoping to kind of get an explanation, and I haven't read it yet. So maybe Sagar goes on to explain what he means by the new right and right-wing populism. But Nathan J. Robbins, Robinson's argument basically is that he doesn't really lay that out. And mm -hmm. so right-wing populism is essentially just fascism because think about who we see as right-wing quote-unquote populists you know uh jair tucker bolsonaro carlson. yeah tucker carlson yeah. um donald trump and they're all fascists so the yeah. question is you know is uh right-wing populism a thing and how does the left respond to that because his argument is kind of directed at crystal ball in the sense that he thinks that she's kind of enabling this type of fascism by one not challenging it and two, by kind of sanitizing it, right? Because Nathan J. Robinson admits that he agrees with what Sagar is saying 80% of the time. But mm. the thing is that, you know, if you allow yourself to just talk about discussions where you, you know, agree, where if you narrow that parameters, you're kind of not really getting the full sense of that person and how problematic they may be. So for like an extreme example, if I were to talk to David Duke about just cats and food, I'm sure that, you know, <laughs> it would, would seem- I would love to see that conversation. It would be so weird. <laughs> It'd be a little scary because uh, he scares me. I, I don't like black cats, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, no, it, like if we had a conversation about that, you know, it'd be benign. It, it wouldn't, I wouldn't know that he's a white supremacist. We'd agree seemingly on everything but if we you know widen that scope and we started talking yeah. about identity politics uh you know politics in general then it would be problematic so you know the argument not to um kind of put words in nathan j robinson's mouth but what i took away from this is that crystal ball is kind of helping to present this fake illusion of you know right-wing populism when in okay. actuality, it, it's it's not a real thing. It's just fascism and we shouldn't enable these people. Now, I don't know what the implication is. I don't know if he thinks that like we should kick Sagar off of the hill. I don't think that's what he's implying. Maybe he just wants Crystal Ball to challenge him more. Uh, but I thought that it was a thought provoking piece because this is something that I've kind of grappled with. Like, I'm not sure how many people remember this, but back in was it 2018 or 2019, me and Kyle Kalinske kind of had a similar discussion on the Progressive Voice show but about Joe Rogan, right? And, you know, okay. whether or not he is acceptable, you know, uh, because I, I take issue with his stance on trans rights and whatnot. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's probably it, his most problematic thing. Absolutely. I, I, kind of, I kind of feel that he's, uh, I'm not going to get too derailed with this, but he's kind of a Rorschach test for whoever his guest is. Because I find when he has Cornell West on the show, uh, you will have just an incredible elucidation on the history of socialism and you'll be yeah. in America. And you'll be like, this is a beautiful hour of my life. I, I, I'm i very happy I spent this time. He has Ben Shapiro on and he's a transphobic piece of shit. And you're yeah. like, oh, well, that, that, was, that was a terrible hour and a half. I'll never get back, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a, a Dave Rubin, but not as bad as Dave Rubin. Like he pushes back yeah. sometimes, like the Candace Owens uh, interview on climate change. That's a great example. I think I even talked about that on my program. But, you know, it's just a matter of like, how does the left respond? And I think that Kyle Kalinske does make a really solid point in that, you know, if you think that people like Dave Rubin uh, or excuse me, not Dave Rubin, but uh, Joe Rogan or Crystal Ball are in a way inadvertently offering you a type of like pipeline to the alt right, then, mm -hmm. you know, having them, you know, um, offer left perspectives could potentially be a pipeline out of the alt-right as well. So, you know, it's complicated, and I think this is a really nuanced and somewhat messy subject. And I wanted to get your take on this because I feel like you really have a solid understanding of the alt-right, and you know how people kind of get trapped in that pipeline. So, you know, what is your take on this? Is the left being a little bit too, like, cancel culture -y, or do you think there's actually something there with Nathan J. Robinson's argument? 
So um, I guess if we took it, what's the classical definition of fascism? You, you're basically combining economic populism, right? That's what Hitler was doing. So ideas that are very uh, social in origin, where we're talking about socialized medicine, things like that, for example, with uh, right wing or far right conservatism, combine the two, right? I mean, even far past, I'm not, I'm not going to call the right wing as, as far fascist as they were. But so... Are, are we seeing that in someone like Tucker Carlson? I think even before Tucker Carlson, you were starting to see that with people like, say, Alex Jones, mm. who was constantly talking about instead of, uh, I mean, they would usually have a couple of dog whistles here, but it would talk about the globalists, right? It's the globalists and the elites, and it's all of them right off in the corner or something like that. He's he's talking about that, and it's all it's all coded for you know the international bankers and and you know in brackets all, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. they're constantly vilifying this idea of there is something external. And I mean, if you're on the left, you'll understand it. It happens to be like there's no secret to any of this. Uh, the the people who control the levers of power happen to be the rich, right? The 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 quote unquote elites. We we know who they are. You have to look at the who's the Fortune 500, right? Uh, we know who the billionaires are. We know what they own. We know what assets they have. We know the oil companies and all that kind of stuff. We understand that, but they will try to take that same idea because everyone experiences alienation, right? We're all, everyone's uh, having trouble finding employment, even worse now with COVID, 40, 40 million extra Americans unemployed. But you've got this idea where everyone ex is experiencing this alienation. And now we've got this section of the right that's tapping into those same kind of things and, and selling them and repackaging them with uh, right-wing populism as well. That's what I would, well, sorry, I know right-wing populism isn't a thing. I agree mm -hmm. with your statement there, right? But that's, that's what I would say is quote unquote right-wing populism. And in the case of Crystal Ball and, uh, you know, during Bernie Sanders campaign, I was a huge fan of her. Uh, yeah. And it was just it was really nice seeing uh, maybe just like a mainstream Sunday morning, TV, like Good Morning America style show that was actually talking about points with Bernie Sanders. Right. Whereas now I cannot stand it. Like if I even if I hear that little jingle that dun, 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 like I actually get like, you know, a visceral, like uh, fearful, like I can fear my, my skin crawling because a I think it's come out now at this point, I think one of the biggest producers or founders on the show happens to be deeply invested in the oil companies of the US. And I've read a number of articles, I think even The Intercept did a, an article on this, how the Hill exists to kind of sow dissemination between the progressive movement and the liberal movement of the United States. So mm -hmm. there might be an argument there. I'm not going to go too tinfoil hat. I was just making fun of Alex Jones two seconds ago, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but the idea then that we have, we have this show in which she's starting to say, and I noticed she was saying this a lot before she got called out on it, that Tucker Carlson is right about this and it usually starts with that preface right like i just want to say this he's an awful person all right he's a white nationalist we get it he's a mouthpiece but he's not wrong about blank and there seem to be a lot of those segments right and tucker was actually right about this tucker's right about this and yes he's a bad person but it is true that there is these global elites that control the levers of power and into to crystal ball i'm sure she thinks that it's it's the rich i'm sure she thinks that it's you know again the, the elites actually are who the elites are right the the like i said the, the the millionaires the billionaires who control most of the levers of power in the united states but you can't repackage what Tucker says for the left. That's where the danger comes in. And that's what I would agree with this idea. And maybe that is, you know, I read Nathan J. Robinson's article. I haven't read the book that you have in your hands, but that that's where I agree with Nathan. That the, the, You can't normalize Tucker and his ideas. You have to consistently call them out for what they are, because otherwise it's very insidious. Yeah. And one of the issues that Nathan J. Robinson also brings up is that there's this... Um, explicit assumption in the book that it would be beneficial for the left if we teamed up with the right if the populist left and the populist right kind of form this you know economic alliance then we can get a lot of things done and i think that that is something that i unequivocally reject because oh, i think absolutely. that you know, if you want to form a coalition, that makes sense. We need a rainbow coalition. I think that Fred Hampton kind of, he, he led the way on that, you know, uh, but it has to be an anti-racist coalition because you can't disaggregate, you know, the race issues from the class issues. So you can't throw people of color and trans people under a bus and say, well, we're going to team up with them for these economic issues, but you're going to have to wait by the side. Like it doesn't work that way because the, these things are inextricably linked. So that's one of the things that, you know, had I read the book, I would have also been turned off by that because I absolutely don't like this notion of teaming up with, you know, the populist right, because I don't think that there is a populist right. And I am glad that you brought up the Tucker Carlson thing, like he's a bad person, but like that still normalizes someone who is very clearly a white supremacist. And, mm -hmm. you know, by trying to point out the good point that he makes, and since he's so nefarious, you know, it's great that he made a good point, you know, positive reinforcement. Sure, I believe in positive reinforcement, but this is an actor who's very intelligent, who knows exactly what he's doing. You know, he throws yep. you a couple of crumbs with regard to economic issues, but if you accept what he what he has once he gets you in, 
then you're pulled into a very nefarious, explicitly white supremacist agenda. And maybe, you know, he doesn't convince you right away. But as you listen to him more, because you were hooked by his economic policy statements, well, then maybe, you know, you start opening your mind a little bit more to white supremacy. So I think it's it's a dangerous path to go down. And I think that there really is like, I don't want to say that, you know, um, the the show the rising is awful because i also watched it a lot you know during the primaries but i think that we do have to be careful as lefties to not allow snakes like you know tucker carlson to be legitimized by us you know either wittingly mm -hmm. or unwittingly and it, it like part of it is I, I feel like it should be just on its face laughable because you have sagar and jetty who's the co-host of the hill rising he's a trump supporter and he rails against neoliberal democrats but trump is a neoliberal like he ran as a populist yeah. but he governs as a neoliberal so how, how do you not abandon people who aren't living up to your populist principles? So to me, it seems like a Trojan horse to, you know, the, the alt-right. And that's why I think that there is something to, you know, Nathan J. Robinson's point here. But I, I don't want to discount, you know, what she's, she's not the only says. one making that critique either, by the way. It, sure. it hasn't just been coming from Nathan J. Robinson. I've, I've seen a lot of other figures on the left, not, not just in relation to, to Crystal in particular, but just the idea of the left starting to embrace elements of that right wing populism. Totally. That, whatever you want to say, you know, quote, quote, right wing populism. Yeah. And I think we have to reject it and we have to be very yep. vocal about it because, you know, if you give them an inch, they take a mile because they are very, very um strategic and they're savvy like people nowadays you're not going to find someone just say hey guys i'm a nazi here's a swastika <laughs> like they use code words like i, they I do, think yeah. that consequence the level right? exactly exactly so i mean you have to you have to not get duped by them in other words but at the same time you know i, I want to bring up kyle kalinsky who made a good response video to this you know to where he says you know you you have to acknowledge that the average like lay person the normies they're not going to necessarily be as keen to these things and by criticizing people like crystal ball it seems like we're being like overly cancelly or whatever so it's mm -hmm. it's tough i i feel like we're walking a fine line but it, there's so I, much I have no stake. desire to cancel her like i right I, like i i don't really say i'm not a cancel culture person in general because i don't think it works i don't think there's such yeah. a thing uh i i think she, i think she has i think she 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 was aware of it as well because she apologized she she issued a video mm -hmm. or sorry i don't know if she directly apologized but it was more of a just like i know what everyone's saying i've seen the i've read the articles and everything and uh, to this extent like i am not praising tucker carlson he's a horrible person he's a white nationalist let's like you know get that out but, you know that's it's a non-starter kind of thing yeah and i i will say just for the record i i like crystal ball I, i'm not assuming like malintent in criticizing because i i've also done horrible things uh on my channel you know it's it's all about growing right we're human beings we're yeah. imperfect like i've platformed ha goodman and i kind of like attribute my channel to his success in a way and now he's a maga chat so that's something that i really think about like how am i vetting these people who i bring on my channel and whatnot you know you 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 know <laughs> you know the you know the thing thing you're getting nervous man man